Hi, good day everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining this webinar today. Today we're going to talk about IP and more uh, specific uh, run rate IP. You can see the type D, so more distribution type IP uh, cameras and NVRs. So basically your day-to-day -day type of uh, IP devices. All right, we're going to start off with network camera. Um, that's part one, network PDZ camera two, uh, part two, and NVR part three. Uh, we will not do the Wi-Fi kit part four. All right, starting off with part one, network camera product series, we can look at first, then secondly, the second generation AccuSense, and then thirdly, the color view range of cameras. All right, so I think you're all aware of the Easy IP3s. Those are your general run rate type of IP cameras that uh, most people will use. Uh, you can see that they are powered by Dark Fighter. Um, so don't mistake this for Full Dark Fighter. Full Dark Fighter, you'll find in the professional series cameras, which is a uh, a higher specification camera when it comes to Dark Fighter. To explain Dark Fighter, it is like a very low lux type of camera, very, very good for darker scenes and so forth. Um, it's got a high sensitivity sensor and lenses and all those kind of things. It makes it perfect for your uh, darker scenarios, perimeter protection, those kind of things. All right, so powered by Dark Fighter is like a level or two down from the full Dark Fighter, but still much better than your general um, uh, cameras when it comes to nighttime performance. Then we will look at AccuSense Easy IP 4.0. So it's still an entry level or run rate type of camera, but AccuSense functionality built in comes in a 2, 4, and 8 megapixel resolution. Um, it's the second generation uh, you'll see is the G2 there. So we will have the G1 is the first generation, uh, ending with a 6 at the back there is your G2. It's the second generation of AccuSense. We'll focus on this a little bit later today. And then we can look at the color view. So the color view currently 2 and 4 megapixels. Uh, also, there's a second generation. You can see the G2. And the G2 now includes AccuSense functionality. All right, if we look at the cameras, just going from Easy IP3 to Easy IP4. Now, Easy IP3 is not being replaced by Easy IP4. Easy IP3 is your entry level normal day to day type of cameras. Easy IP4 includes in the entry level range the AccuSense functionality. Now, I'm not going to go through all the naming rules here. You can just see all the new models in red over here. So all these red models are the new models released now in this year. You see both ranges powered by Dark Fighter, as I just explained on the previous slide. All right, when it comes to the color view, you can see the color view naming conventions. Uh, it ends with a 7 at the back, and there's a G1 and a G2. And like I mentioned before, the G2 means that the color view cameras now also include the AccuSense function. So two functions in one with this range of cameras. All right, so what does AccuSense do for us? AccuSense helps us to focus and react on true alarms and try and uh, reduce the false alarm rate. So true alarms will be focused on, as you can see there on the top right hand side, human triggers, as well as here the vehicle triggers. So we're going to focus on those two type of triggers, which will in most cases be your real alarms. Uh, and then we only get alarms on those, which means you focus on those only and forget about the nonsense alarms. Okay, so just as I just explained, um, AccuSense, what it does, uh, you get the filtering, the classification, human and vehicle targets, and we're going to disregard the rest. You can see they're reduced there on that side. And you get basically two types of AccuSense devices. You get the cameras as well as the NVRs, and we can look at both in this training session. All right, now just a quick comparison between second generation I, um, AccuSense cameras and the first generation. I'm not going to go through the whole list here. Um, just a few differences that I'd like to uh, highlight for you. The first generation AccuSense did AccuSense, the, the, the functionality, the human and vehicle target classification, on motion detection, where um, the second generation, oh, sorry, it did not do it on motion detection. It did it only on your line crossing and intrusion detection. The second generation now does the line crossing and intrusion detection, all right, but it also now includes uh, motion detection. So the second generation is based on video where the first one was based on frames. You get a higher accuracy rate. You can see the initial one was around about 90%. The second one is about 98%. So it obviously depends on your scenarios and the way that you configure your devices, but you can get extremely high accuracy over there. Another addition to the AccuSense range series is the eight megapixel. So now you get them in, they used to be two and four only. Uh, it's now two, four and eight megapixel resolutions. 
you can see also that the lux level has dropped quite a bit so from the initial one 0.009 there on the two megapixel and 0.012 on the four megapixel it has now dropped to 0.002 and 0.003 respectively which means that you can even you, you can use them in even darker certain scenarios so it needs less light to work mainly because of the iris that we've got on these these cameras now Another addition is the Dash U model. So they now include audio. So you can see previously we didn't have any audio on them. Now we do have. And there is a very focal range as well, which means it's motorized zoom lenses. You click a button and it zooms in and out. So very focal models now available on them. Um, all right. So the um, uh, Easy IP3 range versus AccuSense. So AccuSense will end with a 6 over there. And now we're going to focus on the G2s. Um, so just a quick uh, uh, comparisons again, we will have a 2 and a 4 and 8 megapixel options there where we had 2, 4, 6 and 8. But if you drop the frame rate of the 4 megapixel camera, the resolution can actually go up to 5 megapixel. And that's actually what this means. So 4 megapixel supports up to 5. But it's if you do a frame rate drop, then you can do up to 5 megapixel resolution on this camera. Uh, powered by Darkfighter, powered by Darkfighter on both cases. But the lens has now been, we've got a bigger iris on it, so f1.4 there, which is great. Uh, the motion detection that I told you about is now included for the classification. Um, your normal camera uh, just does traditional VCAs, analytics, and so forth. This does the same analytics, but now with the classification included. Uh, we can also do a face capturing now with these cameras. Uh, built microphones, like I mentioned, a couple of things. And I think the rest I've already mentioned on the previous slide. Okay, so now the, uh, in the second generation AccuSense camera, you have an option with strobe light and audible alarm, uh, which is a great deterrent. And uh, well, it can be used for deterrence or maybe for advertising, which I will show you a little bit later. All right, just a quick recap, two, four and eight megapixels in the second generation AccuSense. Um, and then the audio file that I was referring to that audible alarm, you can customize. All right, so you can record your own little message in there and I'll show you an example in a, in a moment or two. Um, another nice feature in Hair Connect, the mobile application, which is free, um, you've got one touch arming, disarming, which is a nice new feature. Uh, and you can see it's already been released. You just make sure you've got the latest version of it. And I'll show you later where to get it. Um, but now you can, from the app, arm and disarm these features, the audible alarms, all those kind of things, you can arm and disarm it from there. So that's a nice feature. Um, that you can just do remotely from your phone. Uh, audio and alarm in and output um, available, like I mentioned, and two-way audio. Because it's got this audio, you can actually have a two-way audio um, uh, you know, conversation with the, the perpetrator or whatever you want to use it for. But there's two-way audio now built in. You can actually hear what's being said close to the camera, and the camera's got the speakers in. So from your app, you can actually talk back to the camera and say, hey, listen, you know what you're doing, I'm watching you. All right, so a couple of examples about, of, of the audible clips that you can put in. You can see the, you know, a private area, please keep away or whatever, and welcome. So you can use it not just as a deterrent, but also possibly as a reminder message. If it picks up a line crossing or intrusion detection, it's really like especially over here, you can put a line cross over there. If people go across the line, the camera can actually remind them to stay away from the other line or whatever the case might be. You can welcome your guests. Um, you can advertise specials or whatever. So you can see the usage of this. It's not just deterrence, um, but because you can record your own message, you can actually use it for other, um, other uh, functions as well. All right, so the AccuSense family, uh, second generation, both top and bottom over here. Uh, the top uh, are the cameras without the strobe light and alarms. Um, so you can see they will come in, if you look at this character over here, just above where I'm pointing, uh, that's a two, so two megapixel, four megapixel, eight megapixel. So now you know how to determine the resolution of these cameras. So two, four and eight megapixel throughout, and the six just after that resolution character tells you that it's an AccuSense camera. All right, so the G2 is means it's a, the second generation. G1 will be first generation. So G2 was the second generation of the AccuSense camera. And um, yeah, that's all I want to mention over here. Now, if we look at the ones with the strobe light and uh, audible alarm, uh, the, uh, the characters in front are the same. So the 248 and the 6 is over there and G2. 
But now what we've done is we've included the U. So if you have a dash U something camera, uh, it means it's got, uh, it's audio capable. Uh, so microphone speakers, so either built in or you can um, externally connect it. And the SL, forward slash SL is for the strobe light and audible alarm. So that alarm, that SL there uh, is for like siren usage and those kind of things, right? So that's just a quick breakdown of the model number. Uh, I'm not going to test you on this after this, this course, but it's a, it's a good idea. It's good to know these things. All right, um, here I've got a couple of videos. Just to quickly, I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, just a couple of recordings that has been done over the world and the clips have been sent to us. Uh, people using the ColorView cameras. So I'm going to quickly just give you an idea of um, what a ColorView camera does and what it looks like. So this here is recorded by the ColorView camera. That's just a cell phone, a cell phone recording for reference. We can see it, it was actually fantastic. I mean, look at that. That is really, really, it looks like daytime almost. Color views are really, really good. Let's pick another one. I love know. your camera. Fil Mamlak al Arabiya Saudiya. Tamam. View in color, even in darkness. Okay, so I'm not gonna. Uh, let's do Sydney as well. Okay, so as you can see, these cameras, you know, doesn't need a lot of light. It, it, it operates fantastically under, under low light conditions. Uh, and for most of those um, uh, examples you saw now, we didn't even switch on the white light that was built into the camera. So uh, it can even go very, uh, darker than that. And then you have a choice to enable or disable the white lighting like you can do with an IR camera uh, that's just got built in white light just to illuminate the area a little bit further. So um, yeah, these cameras are really, really good. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at the specifications or some specifications. Um, so uh, two and four megapixels, you can see throughout here, this is the color of your family, uh, 23 series turret, 2T bullet and the 20 series bullet. Uh, just a quick comparison between them, um, apart from the resolutions are all the same, lenses are about the same, uh, your illumination distance. So the white light that's built into the camera uh, will go up to 30 meters. Uh, so it's like a white light, flood light that you've got, um, 30 meters illumination. That is if you need it at all. And like I mentioned just in the, in the examples we showed before, uh, you don't really need the white lighting. Anyway, um, analytics built in. So five analytics there, five analytics there, two for this one here, this is the small one. And then this particular one you can see with the, at the back there, dash U uh, built in microphone. So it's an option. So if you see brackets like this, in the model number, it means that the, um, the audio is optional. So you obviously have a model without the U and a model with the U. Uh, so just make sure that if you need the audio, you get the one without the brackets, it's got the U uh, behind the dash over here. All right, let's quickly have a look at network PDZ cameras. All right, so uh, just a quick breakdown of them. So we've got non-IR, so no illumination in these ones over here. Uh, we've got IK10, so vandal proof versions over here. Uh, devices with IR built in. Uh, there's also IK10. This one's got IR built in. Uh, you see the res resolution say two and four megapixels and so forth. Uh, this one actually comes up to a five megapixel. And this is the DE series. So remember, this is the, the run rate type of PDZ. Um, so we'll uh, talk later in another meeting about uh, project level uh, PDZs as well. We're going to today talk about specifically this D, uh, sorry, the D3A, uh, this guy over here. Um, and you'll see actually the, you know, the nice features that it's got. All right, so here we go. So D, uh, DE3A uh, PDZ, it's a very small form factor PDZ. 
but uh, quite attractive and uh, also very, very functional. So user-friendly integrated bracket. So it's got this bracket integrated so you don't have messy cables and things like that running up the walls and whatever. So all you know, the cable management is done inside these brackets over here. It's also got this active warning, the audio and the strobe light. You can see, actually see the strobe light going off there and obviously uh, in a built-in speaker uh, like you can see there on, in, in front uh, for an audible alarm to ward off your intruders, etc. Now, um, the uh, panning and tilting, so it does zero to 350 degrees. So it's not a continuous uh, turn the whole time, but uh, it does overlap. The image does actually overlap. So zero to 350 degrees that it can actually uh, pan um, and zero to 90 degrees tilting. And it's a four times optical zoom. So this is more meant for your indoor usage in smaller areas. And uh, I think um, I'll show you on the next slide, or one of the next slides. Got built in IR, so up to 50 meters IR. Uh, IP66, um, and we also have a Wi-Fi option. So um, some of these you can see with a forward slash W means Wi-Fi. So if you don't have the one with a W, it's the one without Wi-Fi and the one with a forward slash W with Wi-Fi built in. So this is not an extremely long range, it's 50 meters, but it should be enough for, for indoor use. Uh, Built-in speaker and microphone, like I just mentioned just now, and you also have a uh, connect app functionality to this camera. All right, let's quickly have a look um, at the NVR. So we're going to look at the, the easy user interface or the economical user interface. So, so um, uh, you, it's switchable, so you, or you can, you can uh, choose to use the um, entry-level user interface or the easy user interface. Uh, AccuSense NVR, and this is also what Damon will demo to us today. Uh, the iSeries NVR is, and like I mentioned, the Wi-Fi, I'm going to skip altogether. All right, so for the um, NVRs, uh, you can see the 3.0 GUI, that's the graphical user interface, uh, the black and the red one, the old one. Uh, we moved over to a newer interface uh, on the EUI as well as on the 4.0 GUI uh, is the black, blue, and grayish type of background, um, or interface at least. Now, you'll see from this list, we've got some dash Q and dash K machines and up to dash I machines there at the, at the back. So the dash I's are the higher uh, spec machines, uh, dash K a little bit lower and dash Q a little bit lower. But uh, when it comes to the dash Q, this is more your entry-level machines. We do not do this, uh, these three over here. In the dash Q, we do the 71. So this is the one that we uh, do do. So um, if you're looking for a, a cost-effective cost version, you can go for the dash Q machine over here. All right, so uh, to differentiate the AccuSense NVRs from the normal uh, NVRs, you'll see that they will have NXI in the model number and also will end with a forward slash S, um, meaning AccuSense. So S is for your smart analytics. Um, so a little bit higher spec machine there, already been released. So last month they've been released, so you're more than welcome to start getting it. Okay, now the um, easy user interface. Uh, what is this? What makes it different? You can see already from the interface over here, it's uh, somewhat different to the standard interface. So the standard interface got a whole, you know, a whole lot of um, extra buttons and functions and features over here. Um, so you can switch it to the easy user interface depending on the client's application. If they just want a standard machine and uh, nothing fancy, whatever, you just switch it over to the EUI, and you've got an easier interface with less things that, that might confuse it. All right, so you can see there only live view, playback, search, and, and config functions and so forth. Uh, not too much for the end user to get confused. All right, so uh, the only difference between the easy mode and the expert mode, apart from the extra couple of buttons, is that it's this for, for this event. So the events are normally for the extra events like line crossing, intrusion detection kind of events and stuff like that. Um, if an end user just wants a standard system just to record and those kind of things, then the easy mode is probably the easier way uh, for them to operate on their, their NVR. So the expert mode obviously has a lot more detailed configurations, a lot more complex configurations than the easy mode. So um, it depends on the application. Okay, so a nice thing um, with these uh, new NVRs, the EUI machines, uh, and you can see uh, the ones that actually supports this function, the start mode function, is only supported by non-POEs, all right? So the machines without built-in POE, and only these ranges here, 71Q, 76Q, 77Q, 76K, as well as the 77K. 
So in South Africa, we'll focus on the 71Q and these two guys here at the, by, at the back, so 76 and 77K series NVRs. Now, what this does is an easy uh, configuration, almost like automatic configuration. All right, so when you start up the machine for the first time, it's going to start up and ask you about the language. So you'll choose English over there. And then the next step is you need to activate uh, the machine. And then you've got two options here, activate. And if you just click this button, it'll take you through to the normal configurations of the machine where you manually import all the, um, uh, all the cameras and all those kind of things and set your hard drive, with, you know, all those kind of things where you've got this button here, it says activate and auto configuration. And there you basically have two or three steps, but the system does an auto configuration for you. So you can see it initializes the hard drive for you. It sets up the network because it gets it from your DHCP server and network. It does a quick SADP search for active um, uh, IP cameras, equation IP cameras on the network, and it adds them for you automatically. So for a quick, uh, smaller installation and so forth, this is fantastic because the system does everything for you. All right, so you can see the auto configuration there. If you do the normal activate and you do the manual one, there's quite a few steps that you have to do manually. So this is like a one click button and it does most of the work for you, which is fantastic. You can get your system set up in a, probably about two or three minutes um, and it happens automatically. So a nice feature. All right, another thing about the EUI, um, the resetting password. So you can use your HeConnect app to reset your own password. Um, and then also there's an option to uh, verify uh, or be able to reset your password using a verified or reserved email address um, as well. Auto connect, three steps. So you activate, you click the auto button and it goes through. So remember that's for the machines without built-in PoE uh, because a PoE machine, you plug in the camera and it's going to be there, right? So you're going to activation, those kind of things are going to happen automatically for you anyway. Um, so, but this takes it a few steps further, it does a hard drive and all the kind of things for you. All right, so that's for the non-PoE machines. Quick target search. Um, we can do a search for humans and vehicles, even though it's not an AccuSense NVR, you've got the search functions in here, so you'll need to have an AccuSense camera or something like that connected to the uh, NVR to obviously classify it like that for you, but you can still do the searches afterwards. And then we have the protocols, the ISUP protocol. So that's like eHome and those kind of things uh, to be able to connect uh, the devices through different platforms, meaning you don't have to set up the DNSs and all those kind of things to get remote access to your machines, which makes it a lot easier again. Upgrade has been done already in April. So this is already um, in uh, full space. So it's already working. Right, uh, resetting password using your eConnect app. This is the process that you're gonna have to follow. Right, so first of all, make sure your phone with the eConnect app is connected to the same Wi-Fi, same network as your NVR or DVR, right? So then you open up your NVR interface. Uh, there where it asks you for your password, you click on forgot password. It's gonna show you a QR code on screen. You're gonna scan it with your eConnect app. So scan the QR code using your eConnect app over there. It's going to push a verification code to your HeConnect app. Then you in, insert that into the NVR because one of the steps at the QR code screen will be asking for that, that uh, OTP. Uh, you're going to put it in there. That's going to default the current password and you're going to set a new password and Bob's your uncle. So it is um, very easy to use. The trick is just to make sure that your HeConnect app is on the same Wi-Fi as the uh, NVR or same network, in, uh, network infrastructure as uh, your machine. All right, now a lot of people were asking about where can we find the eConnect app? It's not on the Google Play Store anymore. We have our own web store. So this is, uh, or oh, sorry, app store. So please go to this app store over here. So appstore.hackvision.com. Go there, you'll find the apps for both Android and iOS over there. So you'll see there's a whole bunch of them, uh, a whole bunch of apps. It's just a small little screenshot. There's a few more that you can download from here, but mainly you're going to use the eConnect uh, app for the functionality of the, you know, the standard remote views and playbacks and those kind of things and the arming and disarming of your cameras. All right, so the quick target search, uh, the, what, what we mentioned is that previously all your recordings are all mixed together. All right, so uh, it's gonna take you hours and hours, a lot of time to work through these recordings and find your incidents and those kind of things. And now if you have an AccuSense camera uh, connected to the system, even if you don't have an AccuSense NVR, uh, you can still do your target classification or your searches. Say, so, right, 
on camera number so and so show me all the human triggers between that time and that time and it's going to pop out all the results and the same same goes for vehicles you can do a vehicle search as well which eliminates a lot of time so it's going to save you a lot of time uh working through all this um you know the mess of all the the other nonsense recordings if you will all right this function is, is supported already uh by the nvrs listed below um and obviously we'll have, expand on that um that range all right accusense nvr okay so you can use conventional ip cameras this, i'm talking about normal ip cameras and so forth they're going to send, send a stream of video to the accusense nvrs and the AccuSense NVR will do the analysis to determine whether it's human or vehicle or whatever. So the whole point is this guy over here, false alarm reduction. So you want to get rid of all the false alarms. Now, you can do it with line crossing and intrusion detection. So if you have a line crossing set up over there, the normal traditional camera is going to trigger on anything crossing the lines or going into your intrusion detection area. But it's going to send that to the NVR. The NVR will receive that flagged um, video stream basically and then do a secondary analysis to do the classification for you all right so up to four channels at 1080p uh, cameras can be used for this and then these particular machines got decoding the decoding capacity is up to 12 channels at 1080p uh, that's been upgraded now from sorry from 12 to 16 channels 1080p so to 16 uh, 2 megapixel cameras all right but your smart channels will be for up to four cameras there. Motion detection, also still done on all the cameras. And then obviously you can do your uh, search afterwards um, for humans and vehicles on all the channels. All right, that's basically what this means here. So it's gonna do motion detection, motion recordings on all the channels. Uh, and then afterwards, you can also search for humans and vehicles through any camera. But active alarms will come from the four channels from normal cameras, four channels into this NVR. So if you want to have more channels uh, for AccuSense purposes, you're going to either have combinations of AccuSense cameras as well as the AccuSense NVR to go for more channels with the AccuSense functionality. All right, so uh, what you can do, this is what I was talking about now, you can use AccuSense cameras also with normal NVR. So it doesn't have to be an AccuSense NVR. Uh, so the amount of AccuSense cameras will determine the amount of AccuSense channels that you've got. So you can replace maybe a few of your normal traditional IP cameras with AccuSense cameras on your key points and then have them do the AccuSense functionality, the, the, um, the target classification on either motion detection or line crossing and intrusion detection. All right, push that to a normal NVR and the normal NVR will then also be able to actively give you alarms on those human and vehicle triggers that you get or you can do a passive search afterwards, the quick target search to search for humans and vehicles. All right, afterwards. Uh, now, these alarms can come through on IBM S4200, he connect even HIC Central. But the whole point is this. You want to get rid of the false alarms and only focus on the real alarms. All right. So that is the whole point of this. Okay. So that concludes it for the, uh, the training. Oh, sorry about the Q1 there. It's not Q1. Um, so, um, yeah, we're going to go over to Damon. Uh, is going to show us how to operate these devices quickly. Um, or some of these devices. Um, Damon, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Fantastic. Yes, we can hear you and we are ready for you. Okay. First, uh, uh, we just uh, quick, quick log in the device. Uh, we can see in the system the device is DS-771. Oh, <laughs> this is the alarm pop up for the AccuSense MVR. Uh, in the MVR, we can see N NXI, which means this device is AccuSense, AccuSense MVR. Uh, in this MVR, we add one camera here. And then we can go to live view. You see it first. You see the live view. Also, the rulers show on the on the live view, which means uh, we 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 set the entrance detection and the lane crossing. In the case, if we want to show that uh, ruler box, we should go to the local and then enable the rulers here. Then the rulers, what you setting, will be show in the live view. Uh, okay, let's go to the event setting. For this, for the accuracy, we can set uh, uh, sound change detection, fast detection, also the intrusion detection and the lane crossing detection. 
Uh, today we will all, we will only introduce for the intrusion detection and the link crossing detection. Uh, first, uh, let's let's assess the intrusion detection. Uh, then we first enable the intrusion detection, and then we can see the detect target include the human and the vehicle, which means if we select the, those two, only the human and the vehicle can trigger the alarm. If uh, such as others lights and uh, Weber spider, uh, our levers will not trigger alarm. Uh, sorry, Damon, um, we can still only see your IBMS 4200 screen. Uh, could you just quickly uh, just show us again? Um, uh, yeah, because we can't, we can't see the screen that you're operating on at the moment. Okay, okay, let me just show the screen again. Can, can, you, can you show the screen, Kamriti? There we go, now we can see, yeah. Would you mind starting over? Okay, okay. Uh, first, uh, we just add a device to, to the camera management. Uh, th since this device, uh, we, first we see the device model. Uh, for the device in XI, which means it, this is the IQSense MVR. Also the i4 means it can instate uh, six hard driver. For the system P, which means it's a system PoE. For S means this device supports, uh, uh, supports for um, IQSense detection. Also, we we'll go to the camera, this way, we'll add one camera here. And then we we'll go to live view. You can see the rulers with what we're setting has show on the live view page. If you want uh, the rulers show on the live view, we should go to the configuration and then go to local. Here, we just enable the rulers here. Then what the, ruler, the rulers, what we're setting on the device will show in the live view page. Uh, after that, we go to the event and set the smart event. In a smart event, we can see we, for the device, we can enable the local smart analysis, which uh, this, this, since this device is our IQSense MVR. So if we want uh, the error, what we detect, um, detect uh, more, ac more accurately, we should enable the local smart analysis, but uh, we can also see from a model, the device supports a 4S, which means uh, we support a four channel, uh, supports uh, uh, only four channel supports uh, uh, enable local smart analysis. Uh, in, the event, in the event, we can see, we can see to the same change detection, also the face detection and the entrain detection, lane crossing detection. Uh, today, I will introduce the intrusion detection. And first, uh, first we, we should enable the intrusion detection and uh, the detection target. We can choose human and vehicle. Uh, those two selections, which means only human and vehicle can trigger alarm. Others, such as lights, uh, also the levels, also the uh, Weber spider will not trigger alarm, which means they all devices can filter a lot of false alarm. Uh, here, in the error setting, we just uh, draw the error and set the intrusion detection error what we want, based on the real scenario. And then we just we set the minimal size and the minimal size. For the minimal size, which means when the people standing in the intrusion detection, and then we can, such as when this one stand at the edge of the entry box, we can see to the minimal box, which means uh, only the person uh, bigger than this minimal entry box, it can trigger alarm. If this person's target is less than this minimal size, it will not, not trigger alarm. For the maximum size, such as we see it like this, which means if if the if the person person says is over this this maximum maximum says it will not trick alarm only the person between only the target says between the minimal size and the minimal size it can trick alarm here is the sensitive which means it's more more sensitive it's more easy to trick alarm 
also the alarm schedule it's uh, we can we can schedule and we can make uh, any schedule you want also the linkage method we can uh, linkage audio warning send your email also notification surveillance center and also the full screen monitor here also the other linkages such as trigger recording and the trigger alarm out. Also, it can link it with PTZ link linking if you have PTZ, PTZ camera. Uh, normally, we choose the notification notifi surveillance center, such as we add the device to the to the 4200 software. If we want to re receive alarms on the on, on the uh, 4200 software, we need to enable the notify notify surveillance center. Also, the link crossing detection it also we should enable the link crossing detection and then select the detection package the setting settings is just like the entry box but uh, link crossing is only only a line such as we draw arrow and this line we just put the arrow what we want when the person go go through the go go through this line it will trigger alarm and let us let us know also, the alarm schedule is same. You can see it anytime you want. Also, linkage master the is as well. Okay, let's uh, let's see. Let let uh, I will ask my colleagues to trigger trigger the rulers. We can see the results. Come on, could you come on? Trigger here. Yeah. Okay, we can see the uh, the when when the alarm occurred, it will linkage one video and the picture. You can see clearly clearly what was happening. Uh, also for the alarm, we can search on the device itself. Mm, we go to the system maintenance and then log. We can see we can choose alarm and the search. Then we will we will see the uh, the alarm corresponding channels alarm such as entry detection start into detection stop. We can also export the results. Uh, where I see, what is it? Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. Let, let's check the results. Um. Oh, sorry. Okay. Where well, I see. Just uh, wait a moment. Let me check. Export. Wait. Uh, here you can see the alarm um, report, alarm alarm re results, such as this. Also, we can check the alarm results on the 4200 software. If we uh, already added the device to the 4200 software, we can check in the real time event. Here we can see all the alarm was what what's happening and. Uh, it, uh, we can handle the alarm. Also, we can send the corresponding email to the right person to handle this. Also, we can maybe we can choose one one alarm, and then here we can check the corresponding videos and also the pictures. It will give us the details what's the alarm happening. We can go to the evening search. To search all, we, we can choose the time. Also, go to the device to check the, to choose the encoding device, and then choose the right the the channel what we test, and then search. All the alarm results will be shown here, and then we can we can select all to export. Export it, 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 it will give us um, 
three selections such as all and only log and only picture. Normally we can choose all, which means it will ex export all the logs and uh, with picture. You can choose the path. path. Hmm. Okay. Oh, let me just uh, create the one, one four. Test. Okay. Okay, and then we can go. We can go. We can check this. The pictures. What? What? Uh, the alarm happened. Happened. We can check the picture one by one. Also, we can check the Excel report. It will give us very detailed info, such as event, uh, event type, or such as entry detection or link, link crossing detection. Also the event time, device type, also group name, such as this, very detailed. Uh, those are the, all the settings for the device. Uh, do, do you have, guys have some questions? Maybe if I can help you. Oh, Damon, that was that was really good. Uh, thank you very much. It's actually quite easy to use this. As you can see, the AccuSense, all you have to do is set up the standard line crossing or intrusion detection and then literally just tick a box to say filter humans and vehicles.